Thales was born into a privileged family in the ancient Greek city of Miletus in about the year 624 BC. His father's name was Examius and his mother's name was Cleobuline. He was born in the same era as Aesop, famous for his fables. When Thales was born, Miletus was one of the wealthiest and most powerful of all the Greek cities. Today it's located on the coast of Turkey. Thales was born into a Greek society intellectually less advanced than those of East and South, the Babylonians and the ancient Egyptians for example. The Babylonians were masterful astronomers and mathematicians, while the Egyptians were also far ahead of the Greeks in these fields. In Egypt and Babylon, mathematics was used in commerce, astronomy and construction projects. It was a thoroughly practical science. Astronomy was used to study the heavens to understand what the gods might be thinking. As a young man, Thales became a merchant which was probably his family's line of business. In his later years, Thales traveled to Egypt where he learned about astronomy and mathematics. When Thales returned to Miletus, he changed careers, took a big drop in income and became ancient Greece's first scientist. Thales disputed the popular belief of the Egyptians that River Nile's floods were caused by Happy, one of their many gods. If the gods were displeased, the river would not flood and there would be famine. The gods had to be kept happy at all costs. He said the Nile flooded for natural reasons, not because of Happy. Nowadays, of course, we know the Nile floods because seasonal rains fall further south in Africa. The switch between believing the gods were responsible for day-to-day -day events and believing that if we understood natural phenomena, we could actually explain and predict events was Thales' greatest achievement. It unleashed people's ability to think about the underlying causes of what we observe. It was the first scientific thinking we know of. Thales was the man who dumped superstition in favor of science a nerd with his heads in the clouds who grew rich. It is recorded that Thales was ancient Greece's first ever academic, its first science nerd in fact, and he was mocked for it. In the wealthy city of Miletus, people told Thales that no one could ever prosper from merely thinking and that's why he was not rich. Thales, however, proved his detractors wrong. Thales had studied weather patterns in the region of Ionia, where the city of Miletus was located. The weather patterns one winter indicated that next season's olive harvest would be a bumper crop. While it was still winter, he placed small deposits to hire all the olive presses in Miletus for the next harvest. In summer, when the olive growers began to realize that a huge crop of olives was coming, they discovered Thales had hired all the olive presses. Thales made a fortune by selling his rights to the presses to the olive growers. He carried out no physical work. He grew rich on mind power alone applying his observations of weather patterns to predict how big the olive crop would be. He did not need any help from Aristius, the Greek god of olive groves. In those days, it was common belief that earthquakes were a measure of their god's anger. Sacrifices, including human sacrifice in some cultures, became the normal way of trying to pacify angry gods. Thales sought a national explanation for earthquakes. He theorized that our whole planet Earth is a flat disk floating on an infinite sea of water, and those earthquakes come when the planet is hit by a wave traveling through the water. For the benefit of modern science, we know Thales got it wrong. His theory was, however, an enormous advance in saying the earth shook because Zeus was annoyed about something. Thales had at least tried to find a rational explanation for earthquakes. Thales was intrigued by matter. He decided that fundamentally, everything must be made up of the same thing, much as today, we believe that all matter is made up of atoms. His idea was that in its most fundamental form, all matter is water. It took about 200 years for Thales' idea to be transformed by his compatriots, Democritus, into all matter is atoms. Thales also spread his tentacle in astronomy, which he had possibly learned in Egypt and Babylon. As with astronomy, Thales learned about mathematics in Egypt and possibly Babylon too. Back in Miletus, he built on what he had learned and was the first person to use deductive logic in mathematics, producing new results in geometry. Thales established for the first time that mathematical theorems require proof before they are accepted as true. He began transforming mathematics from a practical field of study to one that could be explored without worrying about practical applications. Hence, Thales took great leaps towards modern pure mathematics, a subject based on deduction and proof unconcerned about practical use for its findings. Funny enough, 
Although pure mathematics is performed with no thought for practical uses, discoveries in pure mathematics often turn out to be important in the real world. Thales established the Milesian school where he taught mathematics, setting the stage for mathematics to flourish in ancient Greece. Thales was the founder of science in ancient Greece. He established the Milesian school, which passed on his knowledge, most notably to Anaximander and Pythagoras. Greek science and mathematics peaked about 300 years later, in the era of Archimedes. The rediscovery of ancient Greek knowledge was the spark that fired the Renaissance and scientific revolution in Europe setting science on a course leading to our modern technological world. The rejection of superstition in favor of science began with Thales. Thales died aged about 78 in about the year 546 BC. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.